What's up, everybody? We're live. You know us. It's Generation Orange. Uh, no, we're not, Knight, actually. Good question. We are not using StreamYard. Uh, I, I I tried to get some of the stuff working the way that I wanted, and it just didn't work. Uh, but uh, I'll talk about that maybe in a little bit. I do want to, uh, very important to me, that I welcome back my co-host, who's no longer sick, uh, thankfully. Uh, Mark, welcome back to the show, man. It's been way, way What's too up? long, buddy. I know, I know, I know, I know. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, glad to be back. Uh, feeling better. Thankfully, it didn't take me, it didn't take me long to recover. Uh, just a couple of days. Um, luckily, it wasn't COVID-related, so, you know, there's a good thing about that. But uh, happy to be back, man. I know it's been a while. Uh, a lot of things going on, you know, and thankfully, the, the week that I decided to come back, we have a lot of news to talk about. As, as, as far as the the world of soccer here in Houston, so you know a lot of things to get off our chest, talk about, you know, just you know, just going back and forth. But obviously, the most part is just to be back with you guys. Obviously, with you, Sean, you know, it's good to see you again, um, you know, and all that. So ready to go, man. Ready to go. And, and a shout out to uh, Rob and um, and um, I, can't who, I forgot who else uh, did, did the show. Uh, when I was gone. So, you know, it, it was Colin. I'll help you out. It was Colin. Colin. Yeah. I appreciate you two guys, you know, stepping in last minute, you know, I know it's one of those things where, you know, Sean, I, I try to give Sean as much time as I can when, when I'm not able to be on the show, you know, and those guys stepped up, you know, and I appreciate that for sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's been, it feels like it's legit been at least two months since you and I actually did a show <laughs> together, a uh, combination of everything I've had going on and combination of everything you've had going on. And then, you know, we've both been sick literally in the last two months. We've both been sick and recovering, and here we are back and ready to roll. And uh, no, I know it's surprising, but Hector Herrera announcement of him debuting currently July 9th had absolutely nothing to do with that, but it does help a ton. Certainly made me feel better, even though at that point I wasn't even sick anymore, but it certainly made me feel better to know we got a definitive date now. Let's go. I'm excited for that. I don't know about you, Mark, but I'm, I'm super excited for that. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, you know, it's been, you know, we, we, we've been talking about it. It seems like forever, ever since they announced that they were signing Hector Herrera, you know, that now we're only a couple of, a couple of weeks away from that actually happening, seeing him on the pitch wearing Dynamo Orange. Uh, obviously we've seen the promo picks and all the, the announcements and obviously he's been chilling around, you know, Houston going to Astros games and going out to E place and getting to know the city a little bit with, along with his family and with, and with the front office people. So it's good. It's good, man. It's, it's, it's almost here, Sean. So, you know, and obviously, you know, um, I'm not expecting that to be the only news, you know, these upcoming weeks for the Dynamo. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm just excited for the fact that, you know, that we have uh, positivity here in the city as far as soccer goes. And a lot of big announcements coming up as far as like the World Cup. Obviously, with the Dash here, we'll be talking about that pretty soon here. And, you know, obviously with Hector Herrera and the Dynamo. So all I'm going to say is uh, do give us a little bit uh, of uh, leeway this week, guys. Being so long since the two of us have actually streamed together. Uh, it, there may be a couple of moments where like, you know, we're still trying to get that feel back, that rapport back, but, uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to throw that out there. Cause it, you know, there may be moments where one of us is like <laughs> slow to get back in. Oh, right. That's right. That's what I'm chiming in. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm like you said, we got tons to talk about. Uh, I'm glad you ran through the list because it's such a big list and there's so much to talk about. Uh, hit us up. What's the first topic? Yeah, for sure, man. Obviously, you know. First topic, you know, when we were discussing show notes, you know, we were discussing a couple of things, you know, whether or not we're going to go with Dynamo and what's going on with that, you know, and then, uh, or, you know, obviously the whole World Cup thing going on with, you know, tomorrow's announcement and whether or not, whether or not Houston is going to be one of the cities. But man, the dash just came out of nowhere and hit us with some news this morning, you know, and some good news at that, at that you know. Um, you know, obviously, since I've, the last time I've been on a, the Dynamo, the dash have been kind of on a, little bit of a rise and then unfortunately this past Sunday kind of got smacked down back to earth but you know we're not gonna talk about that happens every time happens to every once in a while to teams you know uh you just look at it get with the positives from what you can from that game and then move on so that's what we're gonna do here with the dash they're gonna move on and we're gonna keep going from the first thing but uh but if you haven't heard a new coach is coming for the dash July and July uh Juan Carlos Am Amaro uh, Amoro, I think his name, his last name is. I'm, I'm not looking at it right now. Amoros, uh, Amoros, I'm sorry. Enough. It's Amoros. You're close enough. Yeah, Amoros. Um, 
coming from Real Betis in, in La Liga Femenina, um, has experience and coaching in the Women's Premier League with Tottenham, you know, um, the Tottenham, you know, Sean's very team. So you're going to have to stop that. that now that we have a Tottenham Hotspur former coach coaching the Houston. Yeah. Bears. So, you know, and he, can, and he comes in with a, with a bunch of accolades. I mean, a lot of good things, you know, obviously help uh, Spurs come from third division all the way to the first division. This last, uh, the, the last season he was with those guys. Uh, a lot of personal accolades as well. I think he got a coach of the year, uh, one of those years or whatever in the, in the women's Premier League, and obviously uh, helped Betis have the, their most successful season in La Liga Femenina the, the, this last go around. So, um, as far as coaching in top leagues, that's a check mark. You know, I think along with the Premier, the women's Premier League and La Liga and WSL, I think those are the top three leagues in the world as far as female soccer goes, and. Um, I think, you know, we should, we shouldn't be surprised to, to, to get a hold of a coach like this, you know, as far as, you know, the experience and what he brings to the table. Um, now with that being said, you know, him being named the interim head coach is kind of, nah, you know, I kind of makes me wonder, but, you know, obviously we know what happened in the beginning of the season with, you know, 11th hour, James Clarkson had to be pulled off the team for obvious reasons, investigations, you know, of some, some kind of wrongdoing. Um, I haven't really heard any updates on that, but, you know, obviously with that being said, you know, shout out to Sarah uh, Lodow for hold, holding it down, obviously, and doing a great job as she's, as she's done, you know, obviously with the last minute, inclusion of her being uh, interim head coach for the first couple of matches of the season, doing really well. I think it was a three, three and two record uh, for the Houston dash right up there in the mix for playoffs for the first time in club history. So she's done a really good job uniting the group together, especially with the, with the start not being, being so hefty because of the Clarkson uh, situation. So Sean, any, any words on this hiring? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think you hit hit the nail on the head. It's it's a coach who comes in with so much uh, with so much pedigree, right? It, it's uh, you know, it's a coach who coached ten years with Tottenham Hotspur, uh, you know, with with the women's side, uh, basically helping take them and elevate them from amateur uh, amateur club status in the women's uh, league is all the way up to the top tier, uh, and that's nothing to sneeze at. That's somebody who knows the process that's involved and what it takes. Uh, but along the same lines, um, you know, it's been said a couple times on Twitter, and I've I've heard this from a few sort, you know, a few, <laughs> scary, few places. Uh, but uh, I know there's a lot of people that have concerns as to why was Sarah, uh, Sarah not given an opportunity to be the permanent head coach, or at least the you know long term interim head coach. Um, and for as I understand it, and again, this is from multiple people that have said this and and, and kind of confirmed it through my various sources. Uh, but Sarah was not unaware that this was the idea um, when she took over it was because there wasn't a timetable to make it happen what I mean by that is the club was caught off guard with the James Clarkson stuff but as soon as that took place it was already made aware you know Sarah understood that she was not going to become the head coach and if you look at the tweet that she put out today it literally says that she's excited to work with Juan um, you know and, and she's looking forward to it and you know, sure, you could say that anybody in her position would say the same thing on, you know, on social media, trying to, you know, trying to save face and 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 all of that. But I I think if we're being honest, it's really a situation where Sarah knew and and Sarah felt like she was a little in over her head. And I don't mean from a tactical standpoint; I mean from a personnel standpoint and trying to figure out things um, from that perspective. And uh, you know, I said this to multiple people throughout the the first few matches the Dash had, especially as she was in charge. Uh, is that she, to me, is a coach who absolutely in the long term deserves a head coaching spot, but she's somebody who needs some seasoning in, in a, as a head coach she, or an assistant coach, you know, directly uh, primary to, uh, you know, as first assistant coach, if you will. Um, and so this is a perfect opportunity. She gets to, ha uh, to to learn alongside someone who has international, you know, international acclaim is somebody who, and, and you know this is the case, because if you've been looking at Twitter or watching Twitter, you saw Alex Morgan, of all players, tweet out uh, basically a high coach emoji, essentially waving emoji twice in the same tweet uh, directly to Juan Carlos's uh, Twitter handle. So I'm not saying Alex Morgan is coming to Houston, but <laughs> to me, that's somebody who Alex Morgan it, 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 taking the time to tweet that means, number one, she was interested enough to check into the news. Number two, 
she's got some level of like excitement or happiness well, that he's here. You know, let's uh, let's re let's also remember Alex Morgan played for the Spurs for a little bit. I, Absolutely. I, 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 and, and, and you know, so I'm pretty sure she's familiar with Juan Cuervos and, and his style and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure she's happy to see that type of level of coach come to NWSL. Um, let's not get it twisted. You know, NW, NWSL is not like MLS right now. NWSL, like I, like I mentioned prior, is a top league in, in women's soccer. You know, uh, obviously La Liga and Premier League have better standings as far as, you know, uh, um, attendance and things like that, packing out the, the stadiums, you know, obviously like a hundred thousand people showing up to Barcelona games and stuff like that. But, but as far as the level and talent goes on the pitch, NWSL is right there with La Liga and, and the women's premier league, in my opinion. And, you know, and this is a great opportunity for Juan Carlos. I, I don't think he would have left, you know, uh, his comfort level, obviously him being Spaniard and, and coaching a team like Real Batiste, but these to come over and, and be with Houston if he didn't think this was a great, great opportunity for him. And as far as, you know, uh, Sarah goes, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, I, I think Sarah came in, you know, this is a, this was her first kind of big gig, you know, Clarkson brought her in and she, and she wasn't expecting to be thrown to be the main to be the main person her first season on the on a big professional club so i mean it's still she needs still she still needs time to learn and to and to understand what it is to be a head coach and like i said the first i believe what eight games since she coached she did a great job she did a marvelous job given the circumstances you know and and we applaud her for that and and i'm happy that she's that she's staying on the staff along with juan carlos you know and she and she'll get to learn from Obviously, the little bit that she was able to learn from Clarkson during the preseason, and now she gets to learn from a, from an international coach and Juan Carlos. So it gives her more experience, a different vision or a different viewpoint of how coaching can be done differently. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I I don't want people to get me confused. While I do believe that Sarah Loudon um, definitely earned the opportunity as head coach. I don't think that opportunity was ever something that she, ex, you know, would have expected or that she was in a situation where she thought that she was even deserving at that point. It's only eight matches into a season. Um, you know, there, there, there's still a lot, a lot going on in the background. And, and just, and just to interrupt you a little bit, Sean, and like, and like I mentioned, it was something highly, it was unexpected. It was the 11th hour right before the season was going to start. She was, she was thrown in a position that, you know, that obviously given the opportunity, she's going to take it. Right. But I mean, but there was no, Hey, her, her job wasn't on the line. I, she would have went oh oh for eight, these first eight games. I don't, I don't think it would have been something where they would have kicked her off the team or anything like that. It was just, you know, given the situation, she was thrusted into that head, head coaching role. And thankfully for us in the dine and the dash, she did a really great job, was able to, to, to gather the girls together, get them connected, you know, and they were able to fight through this, you know, and I think right now they're positioned fourth or fifth in the table. And, you know, like I said, this, this, this season is a, is a pivotal season for the dash. We're still trying to make our first playoff uh, position. We're still trying to make our first playoff in NWSL, you know, and that's the goal. That's the goal for this team. And this team has a lot of, Great players. They have invested invested money in players, you know, to 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 make that happen for this season. And unfortunately for us, you know, obviously with the Clark situation in the beginning of the season, it didn't start out the way we wanted to with the coach that we thought we were going to have. So, um, like I said, round of applause to Sarah for the great job that she did, you know. And I'm just happy to see that she's going to stay on and that she's going to learn and grow from this, you know. And I think it was a great great experience for her as for her herself to see that she's able to do it. But, you know, like I said, I think this was, I think this is her first time being on a professional coaching staff. If I'm not mistaken, like I said, I'm not too sure about her, her prior history as far as coaching goes, but, uh, but yeah, a round of applause to Sarah for, for, for the great job that she did. Absolutely. And uh, I do want to go back to the Alex Morgan thing. Cause I, when I saw it, I literally was like, wow. Like I, you know, you can't, overstate you know how much that actually says about at least the the personal uh connection that uh Amoros has with uh you know has with Alex Morgan and also the fact that she enjoyed her time with Spurs while he was a coach there you know that's an important facet that, that nobody considers you know what that tells me is also that he's capable of managing personal relationships you know or relationships with his players 
uh, in such a way that they enjoy playing for him and, and, uh, you know, see him as someone who, who they consider at the very least, uh, you know, like a professional friend type of situation. Another thing that I want to say is, is there's an interview out there and I wish I had the link offhand. I don't know. Somebody in chat might have it, but, uh, there's a link out there of an interview and it was posted, uh, it was posted in, in discord earlier today. Uh, and man, that, that interview with him, uh, by by the two guys that did the interview if you read the actual like transcript of the interview which is not in video format and then they have a video where he and the two guys that are the podcast essentially or vlog cast that he's talking with are breaking down videotape of betis uh or betis uh you know uh and, and talking through why certain things are the way that they are his frustrations over certain things and certain how certain players reacted or responded in certain ways I mean, it was just like, it, it's listening to him talk and reading the transcript. This guy gets it from a soccer intelligence standpoint. Very much reminds me a lot of how much Sarah Loudon understands the game at a very, you know, very IQ level, very high IQ level. Just can read the game, understands it, has a mind for tactics and and. You know, he talked about formations. The question came up, you know, do you do you have a preferred formation? And he basically was like, no, I don't like the conversation around formations because we're always going to be changing the formation based upon the circumstance. You know, sure, we may trot it out as a 4-2-3-1, but then, you know, if we're if we're on defense, we're shifting into a 3-5-2 or, you know, if, if we're in and then we're boxing midfielders trying to protect the middle of the pitch or, you know, if they're running rampant on our wings, we're pushing our wing backs out wider and maybe we're going to a five man back line in that case. I mean, just, you know, watching and, and uh, reading through that article and, and what he had to say, you get a real sense of just how football smart or soccer smart this coach is. And this is something the Dash have desperately needed for a while. Um, you know, and, and Loudon brought that as well. But just someone with the experience to bring that in, uh, you know, in, in a different way than we had with Loudon, but also still having Loudon alongside him. Uh, you know, to me, that's a huge get. It really, really is. And it, it was shocking to me, but in like probably the best way imaginable, I was like, wow, this is actually pretty incredible. And there are some name players, you know, name players that I know uh, some people have talked about that would be great. You know, they're not international superstars or anything by that magnitude, but they would be great depth pieces that are playing very well for Betty's uh, that, you know, you could see how I'm to bring over here uh, in the next off season or two uh, that would fit yeah. right in. Yeah, and I think um, Marlon Mench mentioned that on the YouTube chat. For those, you know, we're streaming on multiple uh, outlets here. You know, I, I think Sean mentioned that earlier. We're doing YouTube, twi uh, Twitter, and Twitch at the same time. So, but uh, yeah, Marlon mentions it, you know, obviously that, you know, it it, it benefits us as a team, you know, where where maybe um, Moto has those connections with players and might bring them over uh, to to the Dash, you know. Who knows? Like I said, it's, it's always one of those things when you're bringing in people, new people to your club, you know, obviously they have connections from other places other other clubs that they used to coach or play or were involved in and so that's that's that sometimes brings a breath of fresh air to your institution or to your club and that's what we're hoping for with one cup you know obviously the dash they're, they're doing really well right now um you know uh like i mentioned you know top half of the table currently uh so we'll see what happens you know but uh obviously sarah will still be the coach until july or until he gets approved for his work visa I've seen uh, just yeah. just for your benefit. I've seen late July is the expectation. So she's got at least another two matches. I think maybe even three. Oh, cool. So yeah. you know, shout out to the shout out to the dash man. Uh, uh, Sean, before you know, I don't know if you have anything else to add on as far as far as the dash goes. Sean, can you not see me shaking my head? Oh yeah. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. So <laughs> this means continue. <laughs> This means no, I have nothing to add. Just so we're gonna right. I told you Sounds I told good. you guys it's been a little bit. We gotta get back in that room. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, obviously sounds great. But hey guys, you know, so obviously, like we mentioned earlier, um, we're doing multiple uh outlets here as far as our live stream, you know, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, you know, and like I said, I appreciate all the love from all the from all of you following us. You know, we're trying to get to certain type of numbers of subscribers. So with that, you know, we want to announce here a little bit of a giveaway. You know, we're trying to get to 150 on both our YouTube and Twitch subscribers. You know, I know a lot of you guys follow us on both. And for those who don't follow us on both, we do have a YouTube channel. 
um, youtube.com slash C forward slash C forward slash generation orange show. I think it is Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, obviously. And once we get to 150 on YouTube and or Twitter, cause we're uh, Twitch, cause we're expecting to do it on both. Uh, we're going to be giving away a nice little diesel stuff animal, you know, for you and your kids, you know, or for yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be for your kids. Um, one, uh, you know, so you can go at night sleeping with, you know, dreaming of dynamo victory. Um, and obviously we also have nice little dynamo hat, new era, uh, brand new, you know, so you can rock. It's sunny as hell out there. So you need a little shade, you know, out there when you're sweating. So you don't want to be sweating bullets out there. So guys, you know, obviously, uh, please help us out, you know, trying to get to 150 on both YouTube and, uh, Twitch. So with that being said, speaking of the dynamo, let's, um, let's talk dynamo, Sean, obviously we're in international break right now. So there's nothing going on as far as playing. I know they just uh, played against San Luis, uh, not to this past weekend. They won one to zero with a goal from Pash money, Tyler Pasher, our Canadian, uh, our Canadian superstar. Um, did you go to that game by any chance, Sean? I, I wasn't able to, cause I was a little sick still. No, I actually had a a work thing that went super late, uh, and by the time it ended, I wouldn't have made it. So uh, no, didn't go. Okay, cool, cool. But it looked like a good little crowd over there. Uh, they had the Dino Dose uh, playing the first match, and then they had the Charity Cup, which, like I mentioned, Dynamo beat Atlético San Luis one zero. So shout out to the guys, you know, for showing out for that crowd and winning that match. Um, but yeah. A lot of news coming out as far as, you know, uh, not necessarily players coming in because we obviously know Hector Herrera's coming in, but uh, a certain number 10 wants to uh, leave for across the Rio Grande into, into Liga MX, and that's one FIFA Pico. My, you know, you know Sean, my favorite Dynamo of all time. Uh, what, uh, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, this is kind of, this kind of came out of, Nowhere a couple a couple of days ago, Dynamo Insider shout out to Dynamo Insider if you're one of if you're checking in one of our our, our outlets. Uh, he's mentioned that you know Fafa isn't too happy with the situation with the Dynamo and kind of wants to move on and go into the to Liga MX. Uh, apparently, a couple teams in Liga MX are looking for looking into possibly obtaining him over the summer. So, so what is, is our man upset that he's not scoring goals? I mean, because that's not the team's fault. Is our man upset that he's not providing any quality service to the forward Sebas? Because that's not the team's <laughs> fault. I mean, is our man upset that he's not tracking back adequately enough on defense and we're surrendering goals? Because guess what? That's not the team's fault. Uh, I'm kind of curious what our man is upset about, because if I look at the way he's been playing, a lot of blame got to fall on our man. It doesn't fall on the team. And you know, I say that with all due respect, Fafa, you know, slow feet don't eat. Look, the man is getting older. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, I think that if he wants to go to Lima, Liga MX and there's a team or two willing to put a little bit of uh, transfer funds in there, uh, you know, one of the things to keep in mind in, in terms of players uh, is that we're currently at our roster limit. Like we can't just bring another player in without a player having to leave. And so with that being the case, you you know, if, if we want to bring somebody in in this window, somebody's got to go. And if that man is Fafa and he's unhappy, then kill two birds with one stone. I'm perfectly fine with it. You know, I'm a big Fafa, you know, uh, fan. I've been a supporter of Fafa for quite a while now uh, and still think that he, he, he can provide a lot. But I also think that uh, he's kind of already submitted himself that he doesn't want to be here anymore. And I don't get that, honestly. Um unless he just feels that Paolo is not the right coach or feels that, you know, maybe he's not going to get a fair shake at left wing and, and they want to go younger. So he, you know, him being 30, uh, you know, 32, I think at this point uh, or 30, whatever it is, wrong side of 30, let's call it that uh, him being the wrong side of 30 that, you know, maybe his opportunities are going to become less and less. And, you know, he knows that his payday opportunities are getting fewer and fewer and far between, I guess, take a chance while you can if I'm him. But at the same time, if I'm the team, I'm like, you're not hurting my feeling by leaving. Yeah, Sanford's and Twitch says he worked so much hard off the ball last season, and Marlon on our YouTube says we'll miss Forrest Gump. <laughs> uh, so I mean, you know, it's it's um it's a little bit crazy because I mean, like you know, obviously Fafa's numbers last last year, you know, obviously I think he was a top goal scorer with eleven, I believe, like six success, and right now he's at two and two for the season. 
And obviously the last couple of games, not including the RSL game where we got spanked, but like obviously the Los Angeles game where uh, the Dynamo looked really good out there and they had Thor on the, on the wing, you know, him scoring fantastic going in Pasher, uh, obviously bringing the energy and him scoring as, as well. I think when, uh, I'm th- I think when Paulo saw those three up front, you know, along with Sebas, I kind of, I got, I kind of gave him a better view of, um, I think these three were better than what we had going on when we had Fafa and, uh, and Corey Baird up, the, up, the, up there. So obviously the, the big investment wasn't Sebas and Sebas isn't going anywhere and Sebas is scoring goals and, and he's assisting out there. I believe he's our top goal scorer and assist man, if I'm not mistaken, but you know, um, if Sebas can bring it out of Thor and Thor can continue his growth, you know, obviously that would be amazing for us as far as, you know, us never really hitting on our draft picks. And then obviously Pasher, if Pasher can get back to what he was before he got his lower, his lower body injury from last year, you know, the, the, the passion where he's being selected by the Canadian national team. Like I said, I think pa- Pasher is, is, is the key here because he, he, I, I'm, him individually, I'm sure he wants to get picked up again by Canada, especially a World Cup year, the Canadian national team in the World Cup. It would be something amazing for him as a, as a pr- player person, personally. But obviously, if, if he achieves that, that means he's, that means he's doing something really well with, the team, with his club team. And we want that. I mean, I want that for Tyler Pasher. I think Pasher is a, is a great story. I, I think Pasher is a great individual and, and a really good player. So, you know, I, I would love to see Pasher come out after this international break and really just get, get, get on the, on the, on the ball and start putting it back, back of the net. Like we were used to see him do it. You know, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, he scored against Atletico San Luis in that charity cup game. And so it's, it's building confidence within him to see, to start seeing him, produce, produce, and start seeing that ball hit the back of the net for him. So if we lose Fafa and it gives more opportunity to Thor and, and Pasher, um, that, that's that's fine with me. Obviously, I think obviously one of the big benefits that Fafa has is his speed. I'm not going to deny him that. You know, he does have a lot of speed, and he does sometimes help us as far as the counterattacking goes with, with his speed, you know. But, you know, obviously with – as much speed as he has, you know, his dribbling could be a whole lot better, but you know, that, that's neither here nor there or in his crosses as well. But, you know, um, I think, you know, like you mentioned, Sean, obviously we have a full roster, so we need to do a subtraction before we can add. So if he wants to go and maybe we can find a place for Corey Barrett as, as well, that'd be great. And bring in two new people, that'd be great. Or Hey, maybe it gives more opportunity for the, uh, somebody like Thiago you know, and, and, and uh, Beto Avila to, to, to get more minutes as far as, you know, MLS matches, because obviously we're not in the U S open cup anymore. So it, it opens up an opportunity for those guys as well. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Yeah, a- absolutely. You know, I, I, when it comes to the FAFA kind of stuff there, um, you know, I think, I think I agree with you that Pasher is a real key to this whole thing, right? Him coming back from injury and, and looking, starting to look more like the Pasher we remember, Pash Money, y'all. Um, you know, and uh, what we saw against LA Galaxy with, uh, with Thor uh, absolutely coming on and looking just unbelievably good. Uh, maybe the best that he's looked all, all season, which, you know, he's only played a couple of matches so far, but even, you know, other than substitution opportunities, but him coming in and playing the way that he did in that match in particular, it told me that he wants to be in that position and he's willing to play wherever coach is willing to put him into the lineup. Um, to answer C's question real quick, when is the summer window? It starts July 7th, which is why July 9th, I think is, is July 9th is when Ache Ache is here uh, or debuts. Uh, and then, yeah, it goes to uh, middle of August. I think August 15th or 20th or something like that. It's, uh, it's gonna be longer. It's gonna be more than a month, I think. I don't know. It's yeah. My brain is fried on that, but I know it's July the first. Actually, I think it's July eighth or something that the window actually. No, it is July seventh. It opens July seventh. It ends sometime in August. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Just to go back to to Thor. I mean, obviously, you know, um, he wants this opportunity. You could see. I mean, before he scored that good, that that great goal against our LA Galaxy, you could see how much how, deter- how much determined he was to go out there and make an impact as a sub when he when he would come in at for and for Sebas uh, for for and then I you know he the kid is determined he wants he wants to show out you know and and that's what you want to see from these from these young players these rookie players obviously you know because you, you can make it 
big, you know, if you're, if you're a high draft pick and you come out here and show out and start scoring, I mean, obviously examples like Kyle Lyron and, uh, uh, Daryl, uh, the night, night, that DK, uh, and, you know, Jack Harrison, to, to, to name another, uh, others are great examples of high MLS picks that go on a, abroad, you know, and Thor wants that. I mean, he's, he's an Icelandic uh, international he went over and played for the for the U U twenty squad. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I'm excited. You know, like I said, if it gives opportunities to those guys, then I'm all for it. You know, I'm never I'm never for keeping an unhappy player on the team if he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be here. Get rid of him and, and move on. Uh, but with that being said, we'll see what happens. Uh, one of the questions I think I saw in the chat was George, or one of the questions that George asked was, "Give Darren Quintero number ten. Uh, that'd be great. I, I guess he can play the number 10 role, but as far as the number 10 jersey on his back, I mean, you know, he can't really do that in between the seasons or whatever. Uh, but, you know, I'm not really, you know, as far as like the number 10, I know historically the number 10 means that that's your playmaker, one of your top stars, you know, on the team. But the number 10 in Dynamo history, to be honest, hasn't really meant too much. Uh, I mean, the, I, I would say the best number 10 in Dynamo history might w would be, Giles Barnes, I guess he wore it for a couple seasons before, you know, when after he wore number 23, they sent the Sanchez wore it for one year, you know, that great year when we won the U.S. Open Cup. So, I mean, but other than that, you know, you had Tommy Martinez, eh, you know. Uh, so, yeah, man, I mean, the number 10 in Dynamo history hasn't really lived up to the hype as, as far as the number 10s in the world go. So, you are killing uh, me right now, Mark. You are forgetting the most impressive number 10 that we've ever had ever the, mo the in, most impressive number 10 that we've ever had in the history of dynamo oh, no man, i'm, I'm going all the way back to the first year dwayne de rosario dwayne de rosario is number 14 oh was he number 14 yeah he's number 14 all right all right yeah yeah man come on man but i will say the uh yeah the dynamo what was it the uh, honduran uh the honduran uh, maradona Alex Lopez, he was great. <laughs> Didn't Alex Lima wear the number ten? Yeah, I, I, no, no, it was it was Alexander Lopez. No, I know that, but I think Alex Lima wore number ten. No, too. Lima, Lima, Lima wore number fourteen as well. Oh, did he? Yeah, man, fourteens so, have been way better than ten. Can we get some good number fourteens up in here? I need some fourteens. Uh, yeah, I love number fourteen. You know, TT Henry. But uh, anyways, um, yeah. So I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, hey, we can we can save that number ten shirt for a big signing in the summer. You know. It's, Especially if we get rid of uh, players like Fafa or, or, or Corey Barrett or whoever, you know, we open up spot. I mean, who knows? Say, I would say love it to loud for people in the back. We can save that number 10 for what now? For for a great incoming player that can actually be a playmaker and, you know, create stuff for, for the Dynamo. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens. So, hope, well, I mean, like I said, like Sean mentioned, the uh, transfer window opens in July. Uh, and, and it goes all the way up to, I think, mid-August, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So, well, I mean, there's a lot, lot of stuff coming up, you know, with, with the Dynamo. And it, it's going to be very exciting to see. And obviously, they got a, a big game this weekend against Orlando City uh, Saturday. So, they come back into league play. Hopefully, you know, we get everybody back healthy, ready to go. And uh, we get back on a winning streak because that last game against RSL did not leave a good taste in our mouths. So, um, John, anything else on the Dynamo you want to add before we move on? You, you know, coming out of this international break, it's kind of a pivotal time, right? We've got four matches coming up before uh, before uh, Ace Ace debuts. Um, and, uh, you know, the Dynamo have, uh, uh, you know, they're playing, they're playing some Orlando uh, away, Chicago at home, Portland away, and... Oh, there's one more I can't remember. Uh, but, uh, you know, four matches basically uh, in a pretty short span, all things considered. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's going to be it's going to be really important that we leave these four matches with at least four points. Um, I'm not saying four draws, uh, but two road matches, two home matches, and they're they're split up, you know, home or away, home, away, home. Uh, and, uh, you know, Chicago is a pretty, you know, pretty good team, but they've shown weaknesses. Um, you know, Portland's shown plenty of weaknesses, but they always play us really well. Um, Orlando's shown weaknesses, but they have their moments where they're just playing out of their minds. Uh, and then I don't remember who the fourth team is. I really can't remember. Uh, but then after that, it's Frisco and Austin 
Frisco uh, in Frisco. No, Frisco here, and then Austin away uh, for the Austin away trip. Uh, and we need to pay, we need to pay those guys back, man. We need to pay those guys back. We can't take those L's lightly, man. Especially especially the the Frisco one because you know we're winning that game. We should have been up two zero. The referee would have gave us the memo goal, and we ended up losing two one. We need to, we need to give pay them back. Pay them back. I still look. At, speaking of referees, okay. Just speaking of referees, <laughs> man, that frustration I felt in that moment when that referee didn't give the goal. I, you know, at the very moment, it looked to me, okay, I could kind of see what he saw, but how does VAR not even bother, re, you know, at least reviewing it? He didn't even bother reviewing it. He just kind of, okay, cool. Yeah, y'all sound like you know what you're doing. All right, we good. Like, he reviewed other stuff, but no, nah, we ain't going to review that. Uh, just frustrating. I mean, absolutely frustrating. And then, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit more in, in a minute, but I mean, I sit here and I look at the, the and I'm coming back to this because it's been so long and I feel like it, it just can't go unsaid. Uh, Frisco coming here. I hope we take down every VAR camera from the goal. I do not want to see a goal line camera at all. Uh, yeah, Frisco do not get that luxury for, for being here in our stadium. Absolutely not. Because we didn't get that luxury in their stadium because their stadium is shit. So, anyway, sorry. Just personal uh, thing. Not, not, I, but I, uh, I do want to shout out uh, Eric Simpson who reminded me uh, that it is Charlotte that is the fourth match that is a home match against Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah, another one of those that's teams that's playing playing pretty good, guys. Uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough four match stretch. It really is, and uh, you know, but but knowing uh, Ache Ache is 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 going to debut on July 9th, uh, and some of these players that you know, when you have a player like that that's coming in, you have to believe that these play these other players see that and go, man, I'm gonna have to step it up. I can't afford to 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 play as I've been playing. Memo. Um, Sorry, a little something in my eye and something in my ear, something in my throat too. Uh, you know, Memo's really got to step it up because you know he and he's played well the last couple of matches, uh, but he's also had moments where it's like, all right, bro, you're starting to show that same thing you were showing early in the season. And I'd like to really know where Memo was for the rest of the season because minus this two weeks, he's been basically virtually, um, you know, virtually non-existent on the pitch. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, look, we're we're, we're... I believe what 10, 11 matches into the season or whatever. 14 matches into the season. 14 matches into the season. And, you know, I I can, I can, I can give you five players I can, that I would knock off this team automatically already, you know, it's, you know, if it was possible, you know, and, and the thing is like, you know, after 14 matches and then obviously with four more coming before I would for the Herrera's debut, you know, you really kind of have as, as a coaching staff, you already know who you can count on, who you can go to. Uh, and like I said, those players, unfortunately, those five that I, that I have in mind, you know, yeah, you gave those players time for the U.S. Open Cup in competition. We don't have that luxury anymore. So those players are going to unfortunately sit on the bench unless there's an injury occurs. In my opinion, they should, but obviously I'm not on the coaching staff. But, uh, but you know, obviously – I think Pat and uh, Ted and those guys in the front office have something up their sleeves. I mean, they see what they, – they, they, all, they all obviously are watching the team as well, and they see that the team still kind of lacks something, you know. Uh, uh, they still kind of need a little something, even though we are in the mix for the playoffs and things like that. I think not only would be would making the playoffs be great for the first year under the Pat Austin-Ted era, but – if we're able to get in the playoffs and actually make some noise, that would be a, uh, to be a, would be a great, great start for them because they're a little bit ahead of the, uh, of, you know, what we're expecting for them as a fan base. Um, you know, so we'll see, like I said, um, it's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks to see what happens or what kind of rumors are coming around because, you know, obviously there will be rumors, uh, there are a lot of European players whose contract ends the end of the end of July, who, exp- who have expiring contracts in July. I mean, in June, and will be looking to come ab- ab- abroad to play, especially if they if their nation is playing in the World Cup and they want to get some minutes to make sure that they're fit to get into the World Cup. That's one of the things that we should be looking forward to. So, we'll see what happens, man. Um, Sean, anything else before we move on from the Dynamo? Oh, yes. Actually, I do have something else. Um, late breaking news. Well, not late breaking news, but news that broke yesterday. Our president, John Walker, is stepping down. Um, 
I don't know if it's been confirmed or whatever, but you know, I'm gonna say rumors or you know, apparently I mean, that's that's it was the Dynamo official account that tweeted it out. Okay, so I think so, I think we can call that one confirmed at this point. Okay, so okay, so you know, obviously, um, John John Walker stepping down. Um, for, a, for, a, for in my personal opinion, I think he did. He's done a great job in the and the what I think two or three years that he's been with the Dynamo. Um, a lot of a lot of sh- support. He's been out there, you know, with the fans and supporter groups and the bars and, and different outplay and different places. You know, getting uh, getting listening to voices, listening to what the, the the people are saying, what they're looking for, and uh, and I think he's done a really great job, man. So you know, shout out to John to John to John Walker and the, and the amazing job that he's done along with Yana. Um, so you know, it, it's sad to see him go, but I mean, you know much love to him and you know um uh, hopefully you know whatever whatever he decides to do in the future you know it all goes well for him i certainly i certainly agree with you you know john walker was a breath of fresh air uh as president of the dynamo and, and president of soccer operations whatever he, his official title ended up being but you know essentially president of uh, president of the club um just you know, bringing in valuable people with brilliant minds when it comes to business. I mean, from a business perspective, John Walker was genuinely second to none. Um, mm-hmm. Just a fantastic job from the business side. You look at all of the uh, all of the uh, enhancements that have been made within uh, you know within the stadium. Um, a lot of the you know engagement with supporters and fans, like you brought up, um, a lot of that was spearheaded by either him or people that he brought in. Um, you know, and, and I can tell you firsthand the engagement from the front office with the, the, the fan base and with the supporters, it is night and day from what it was when Kennedy was in charge. Um, you know, when Matt Jordan was Matt Jordan, um, you know, and, and pretty much ever since Oliver Luck left, we never had a business guy in the front office that was this capable, uh, of leading an organization from a business perspective. Um, you know, fans can say all they want about how he never delivered because of you no know, MLS cups, you know, no, you know, we, ne- we barely didn't even, we haven't made playoffs since he's been here. None of that is his responsibility. None of that is within his purview. It's with, it's not within his wheelhouse. He can't be, you know, he can't be faulted for any of that. Um, you know, and, and I wish him all the best because he is a really great guy to talk to. He's genuine. He's honest. He's transparent. Um, you know, he, he's not, he's not going to hold back and, I don't know how many presidents of uh, a soccer club you can get that are going to go out and uh, the very first match of a season or whatever match that was uh, and, and down a shot with you, uh, Mark, I don't know if you remember down a I shot remember. with you, take pictures after the fact. Uh, and I, just got, I got the pictures throwing up H's man. I mean, <laughs> look, the, the guy deserves a lot of respect. He was genuine and he was a, uh, he's a fun guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wish him the best in whatever he's got coming up next year, uh, you know, moving forward in, in life and otherwise. And, uh, like I said in chat, he's leaving some pre- pretty big shoes to fill. And, uh, you know, I have no doubt after looking at the hires that have been here and, and have come in since, uh, Ted Siegel took over, uh, or Seagal took, no, yep, Siegel. I always get it wrong. Ted Siegel took over that, uh, he's going to have, you know, he's going to bring in somebody who fits that position, position to the best of his ability. Um, you know, you know, see, you better shut your damn mouth. <laughs> you better. Sh- I- I'm serious, bro. Don't even joke about that. Don't even joke about that. Look, Ted Siegel don't play like that. Okay. He wouldn't bring back Chris Canetti if Chris Canetti offered to pay him for the position. Uh, <laughs> T- Ted is uh, look, Ted is way above that. I- look, Canetti was a decent business guy, but for as decent as he was a business guy, he was a terrible people person. He was not good at engaging with the fans. A lot of, a lot of negative fan sentiment that was not specifically around the the production of quality on the field centered around things that Chris Kennedy specifically introduced. But, but I mean, but but now but now now that roles is split. So you know now you got Pat on stand who's, who's who's way great with the fans and doing it. He's doing the 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 the. the I don't want Kennedy back. Stuff. Look, I know. I know. I'm just saying. I don't want Kennedy. I'm just. I'm just saying. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that that role has been split into two now. So, I mean, you know, who knows? But, yeah, I don't think that he's coming back. <laughs> um, yeah, Sean, Sean's about to blow a gasket. Bro, you, know, you have no idea. I am so <laughs> like, oh, man, you you dug up some old trigger wounds, bro. Like, yeah, that should have so, came with a trigger warning. That's what that should have came with. I, warning, 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 warning. Uh, but anyways, yeah, man, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a no-go for, I think, both of us. But, uh, but yeah, guys – 
MLS has just signed a new television deal with Apple TV, a new 10 year, 2.5 billion with a B year deal with Apple television. And that mean that means that they would be available on, on Apple TV. If you currently have Apple TV, uh, there will be a MLS plus, or I don't know what they're going to actually call it, but like a MLS plus stream that where you can go and watch any of the games that are going on for that day or whatever. And season ticket holders of each club will have access to if you become a season t- ticket holder. So another incentive of why you should become a season ticket holder for the dynamo uh, or, or in your respective uh, club, if you're an, a fan from another club watching us at this moment. Uh, but yeah, Sean, um, a big deal because a couple of weeks ago, it, lo- it looked like, man, we were the MLS weren't going to get, anything done or they were going to have to go back to what they're, what their tails tuck within, with, within their bits, between their legs, back to ESPN and Fox and Fox. I don't, I think Fox didn't even want them back to be honest. Um, there's still an opportunity for ESPN and Univision to still telecast some national games, like having a game of the week or whatever for both uh, stations or whatever. So we'll still have that uh, available to the to the fans if they can close the deal with that. Uh, but your thoughts on Apple TV, man? Um, they do currently have sports on Apple TV, which is the MLB on on Apple TV on Fridays. If you haven't, if you guys haven't seen it, I've logged, I've watched it a couple of times when the Ashes were played on Friday on Apple TV. Uh, my personal opinion about it, I like I like what the how they they show out the game. I like the 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 graphics and stuff like that. Not a big fan of the broadcasting team, so we're going to see what happens with that because obviously this is going to kill off local broadcasting uh, for the teams. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, maybe guys like Glenn and Eddie get a chance to get hired by the Apple TV. Who knows? We obviously it's early in the early in the in the details and what's going on with those guys, with those guys. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But as far as you know the what I've seen from Apple TV on the baseball side, I like I like the graphics. I like the way they present the the the, the sport. I just don't like the broadcasting team that, that that's on to uh, speak about the game. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, man, this is a huge deal. Uh, you know, we we've been talking about it in our Discord or in the the Surge Discord all day uh, since the news broke, and and on Twitter all day since the news broke, and and there's a lot to unpack in this announcement, right? It's we know it's a two and a half billion uh, over ten years uh, commitment from Apple TV, or from Apple. Uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, that's two hundred and fifty million per year uh, over the lifetime of this, uh, you know, of the contract. Um, you know, two hundred and fifty million split twenty some odd ways, even thirty ways, is still pretty good money. Uh, you know, per year invested, you know, reinvested right back into the teams. Um, you know, and uh, what's important uh, for this particular deal is that prior to this deal being signed, the players uh, in their new CBA worked out that uh, part of the CBA uh, states that they get a percentage of there's a a, a profit sharing percent um, of media rights revenue, and this is considered media rights revenue. Um, now I say that I'm actually curious. It may not be media rights revenue um, because they are also doing uh, well. Yes, it is. They get a part of that. But part of this is also that it's going to be a new streaming channel within the Apple TV lineup, effectively. Um, and, uh, you know, so so if you have Apple TV, you'll be able to get the channel. You still have to pay for the separate subscription. Uh, it's a subscription service just like HBO Max, but you can still get HBO Max on a plethora of different, uh, you know, different streaming services. Uh, you know, same thing with Netflix at this point and, and Amazon Prime Video. Uh, you know, Hulu, same, you know, uh, there you can get the apps all, all over the place now. Go ahead. Um, breaking news. Uh-oh. Uh, there's been a transaction Uh-oh. and, 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 uh, not, I'm sorry, but not, not, not dynamo related, not soccer related, but, uh, no, I know a lot of, when obviously we're at Houston, Houston, uh, show. So, you know, the Rockets have traded Christian Wood to the, to the Dallas Mavericks for the 26th pick, Boban, Mojavonix, Trey Burke, and Marquise Chris. Just, uh, just FYI. Great business. No, that's great business. Get out of here. That's Bobon. great business. Love Bobon. Uh, anyways, but yeah, man, going going back going back to the Apple Television deal. I mean, the fact of the matter, you know, that the, the, it's a ten year deal just speaks volume on Apple's TV, uh, Apple's commitment to the MLS because you know, obviously, the the first year or two, I'm not expecting too much of a difference as far as like you know, like oh, uh, they're gonna, they're, you know, as far as you know, just 
wowing us as far as television or, or hopefully the graphics are a little bit better. Hopefully the, the way it looks on the on television is a little bit better. He's a high, better high quality video for, for the, for the, for the, for the games. But, but I am expecting them, you know, to help grow the MLS, you know, as a, as, as a partner, obviously, you know, um, think of this as more like, like an NFL type structure, you know, where you have, you have the NFL, there's no local broadcast for the NFL. It's either on Fox or CBS or ESPN or NBC. And those, and those, and those, uh, main uh, stations, they have their, their main broadcasters who, who go to those games, you know, you'll have, you'll have your Troy Aikman's and, and Joe Bucks and your, and your, um, uh, Tony Romo's and Jim Nats. That's the type of structure I think MLS is getting here with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, Apple TV. So case, for example, if like somebody like Glenn Davis, who, who's been doing this, you know, with Fox and ESPN, you know, broadcasting different games for those guys nationally, you know, throughout the years, not only may he do a couple of dynamo games, he might do games for other teams in the MLS, you know, as being a rotating cast of broadcasters available to Apple television. So who knows? Like I said, it, it, it can really benefit those guys, those guys who have been working in local uh, broadcastings for their local teams. Who knows what might happen? But I know one of the teams, um, I know one of the questions was, you know, if, if that doesn't happen, will we still be able to listen to Glenn and Eddie on the radio? Uh, you know, obviously they've been doing their thing with, uh, with ESPN 97.5 broadcasting the nationally televised games for the Dynamo and doing it on radio on ESPN 97.5, you know, and, I, and I'm pretty sure they'll continue that if if, it's, if they want to. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's never off the table for Glenn, especially with his connections to ESPN 97.5. Um, but you know, but if he does get the opportunity to go on on television with Apple TV and Eddie as well, I mean, you know, I'm, I just I guess it depends on what's better suited for those guys and and their personal ambitions or whatever or whatever they're trying to do. Um, but yeah, but like I said, I'm looking forward to it. A lot of people are kind of down because it's like you know, well, another streaming server. So it's now, but look, guys, like 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 I mentioned earlier. If you're a, a, if you're a Dynamo season ticket holder, you already get the access to it. It's like when it's like a lot of these phone carriers now. You get on with AT and T, will give you HBO Max free al along with your you know along along with your subscription to AT and T or you know or, or or whatever the case may be. You know you might pay for a certain cable uh, a certain cable that or that you already have HBO. Well, HBO Max comes to you free already because you're already paying for the service. So. Um, so, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, and, you know, streaming is the, is the way of the future. You know, it's one of those things where it's going to continue going, even, even though sometimes I think it's, it's becoming a little bit too much of a, a saturated market with everybody wanting their own personal streaming service. But, you know, whatever, some of them keep continue going and some of them die off, you know, like CNN Plus and others. Uh, hopefully Peacock dies here pretty soon too, but anyway, that's, but that's neither, neither here nor there, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited for the Apple TV deal. I think it's amazing for, for, for not just for the league, but just for the potential of uh, the outreach, you know, and obviously the money that comes into the league for, with this deal. So John, anything else you want to add to it? Oh, I got plenty to add to it. So again, we got to unpack it all right. So MLS is also agreeing to pick up the cost for equipment and broadcasters for all matches. They're going to create some sort of central hub. And then there's going to be, and I, I assume this part will be produced by Apple TV. There's going to be some sort of swing around program, you know, NFL mm -hmm. red zone type of situation where they're going to air every time there's a goal or, you know, major set piece or, you know, something of that nature. Um, the price for the subscription service is going to be a, you know, to be determined, to be announced yet. They haven't announced what it's going to be. Um, all league matches, really big, guys. All league matches moving forward in this 10-year span. How, uh, the league is committed that they're going to be on Saturdays, as staggered uh, kickoff times on Saturdays or on Wednesday nights only. There will no longer be any other midweek matches for league matches anyways. Tournaments are a different story. Um, and that means no more Sunday kickoffs. That means no more Friday night kickoffs either. Uh, so Saturdays is Dynamo Day. Saturday and Wednesday nights. Uh, you know, and... Honestly, that makes it easier for us because if it's not a Saturday game and there's a game in the week, it's going to be on a Wednesday. Uh, it's definitely nice to be able to know it. you've only got to set aside at maximum two days a week for the Dynamo. Uh, it's going to be pretty pretty sweet. Um, also, importantly, League is committing to structuring the schedule to stagger the Saturday kickoffs. Um, I said that, but what's important about that is it's also only afternoon and evening kickoffs. 
I suspect they're even going to try doing kickoffs later than 2.30 in the afternoon. Like, we've seen, seen some of these East Coast games kicking off as early as 12 o'clock. Uh, I think that's going to be a thing of the past as well. I think they're going to start doing them more like later in the afternoon, closer to 4 or 5 o'clock uh, with kickoffs, which means that most Dynamo matches will not be midday matches anymore. Um, you know, we shouldn't see any more of them at all, uh, realistically. Um, one yeah. thing I'm, I'm kind of curious about with this deal is... Um, you know, we're talking about MLS picking up the cost for equipment and broadcasters and, and, and the production cost, essentially. I wonder if, to some extent, I brought this up in Discord, uh, but does that potentially mean that we could see that MLS takes over, um, you know, responsibility for providing or having on site the VAR cameras, the VAR, VAR angle, uh, camera angles, uh, you know, making sure that all of those things are actually taken care of at every stadium, uh, and does that finally mean that we will see consistency uh, in the, in what is available from a VAR perspective? I, I I think that that was the way that it needed to go, anyways, regardless of this deal or not. I mean, you know, to be a respectable league in this in this in this in this time and era, you have to have that kind of technology available for your for your league if you want to be uh, credible. You know, um, you know, you see with all with all the other sports, you know, the NBA they have their 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 hub in Sycamore in New York where. You know they have you they can go they have a group of people there looking at the replays and reviews and send them back to the the officials for a set game you know and all that stuff you know you see it with with, with the premier league where they have a, a room and 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 somewhere in the stadium where they have the fourth official in the back you know looking at the replay or telling or going into the officials he, uh, uh headphone and telling hey you might want to look take a look at this or whatever uh and things of that nature i think that's the way that mls needs to go and progress to like i said the, the obviously is the biggest thing like personally as far as us and the dynamo was that memo go and, and frisco that obviously should have been a goal you know and and it cost us points uh and at the end at the end of the day at the end of the season we'll see if that if that one play you know can be it can determine whether or not we're in the playoffs or not who knows uh a lot a lot can ride on that but you know that that shouldn't be the case in point with the technology available and where and with where the league's ambition is to be as far as being a global brand, they need they need to improve the VAR and the goal line uh, equipment and all the equipment in general. I mean, you know, I've hear I see on Twitter and all social media is about the lack, lack, lackluster uh, video quality for the games, especially like nationally televised games and things of that nature. Where where you'll see on ABC uh, a football game and they they have. 200 cameras on that field for but for an mls game they'll have like 50 you know you, we need to have better improvement better angles and better uh better views of the game you know this 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 is a world game and as far as as far as watching it you want to give the best quality uh best quality product to us from a television standpoint as possible if you want to attract fans and get those uh, ratings up, or whatever. Yeah, uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind, um, even though you mentioned the, uh, you know, season ticket holders uh, to any that are part of a, or any, if you're a season ticket holder for any MLS team, which of course for all of us that are watching or participating in this show, you're a Dynamo fan, uh, or at least you should be, uh, you know, you get the free, free subscription to the new service. Uh, but importantly, those that have Apple TV Plus already that are subscribers, um, even if they're not a season ticket holder, uh, they will still get select matches free um, that, that'll be streamed free. Uh, and then there will be some that'll be set up that'll be just similar to like the Twitter ones or similar, you know, otherwise that were free, um, you know, free freely available to non-subscribers in streaming format. Um, those will be probably, I think, like you said, similar to the games of the week, but, you know, not ESPN or Fox specific. They'll be just a different broadcast. Uh, a question on the on the on the Twitch. Any new broadcast deals in the future for USL Next Pro? Well, Next Pro is a part of that Apple TV deal. Uh, League Cup, MLS Next, and MLX Pro. USL from all from all that I understand is going to stay is going to stay with ESPN Plus, uh, which is great for that for those for those guys in that league as well because I think ESPN is ESPN Plus has done a great job as far as you know bringing other soccer leagues into the forefront as far as being able to view you know obviously they have the lamar lamar hunt open cup as well um 
uh, rights to that as well. So, you know, I think those guys will stick there. But as far as the MLS Next Pros and MLS Next and League Cup, those will also go to the Apple TV stream um, as well, uh, with, along with the MLS rights. Yeah, um, I do want to go back to one thing you had said uh, in regard to having, uh, you know, the NFL side of that and, and how many cameras and all that. One thing to keep in mind is the reason the NFL has has expanded in terms of viewership the way that it has is because they've had a set day that has been the NFL football day. You know, Sundays is NFL football. Now, that's not to say they don't have Monday night football and now Thursday night football and occasionally Wednesday night and even Tuesday night now. Sometimes Friday night. It just depends on the week. But it's still this thing where by having a set day, a consistent day and in, in time frame that you are your games are airing. Uh, and your games are being played, uh, again, uh, you know, across America and even globally, people know that's the time they can tune in. It doesn't matter who's playing. If I tune in at that time, I'm getting a game. Um, and and yeah. that's just so different but, than years in the past, right? You've not been able to necessarily say that, I think, with with MLS uh, historically. Yeah, I mean, you know, but, it, but it also goes again, obviously, you're talking about a huger, uh, a much larger investment from the TV companies into the NFL product, right? Sure, I mean, sure. And uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying MLS is going to get to the level of the NFL. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just yeah, saying yeah. I'm just saying if MLS ever desires to grow in a you know in a much better way, one of the first things they got to do is get. And I've said this: they have to have a consistent day that matches are played, uh, or at least one or you know two days throughout the week, and not this. Oh, we might have a Tuesday match. We might have a Thursday match. These just very inconsistent times and days makes it very difficult for fans to plan around uh, until they get the schedule. Um, and so I think it'll just I think it'll just make things a lot easier on fans that that want to watch more soccer. You know, and, and it's understandable as well because I mean, like you you look you look around the world. You know, obviously soccer is number one in most countries, right? So that's 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 their main focus. You know, so you can play soccer anywhere from Monday to Sunday and, the, and, and those supporters will grow out to those stadiums for the, for that team. Cause that's their number one team. Uh, the U S obviously doesn't have, doesn't have that same luxury because, you know, if the dynamo playing the same time as the Texans, you know, or, or the Astros or, or the Rockets or, or whatever's going on at the, at that time, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, to, to, you know, depending, you know, I'm not saying that they're any less of a soccer fan, but Hey, if I got tickets to the Rockets and I'm, and the Rockets are in the midst of a, playoff run or whatever and you know the dynamo game is just uh it's just the, the, the third regular season game you know i i might prioritize going to that rockets game you know that day so you know it's just it's just you know it becomes a little difficult you know obviously especially when you have other other professional leagues going on especially sports that are viewed as bigger in america you know than than, than soccer so it, it makes it a little bit more difficult so just having the stability of having one or two days out of the week that are solely for MLS or the our first division soccer or whatever in the United States might might work. Hopefully it does. Uh like I said, you know, it'd be one of those things and we'll see what happens, you know. Uh, real quick before we get to the uh commenter question or uh, statements there slash question. Yeah, actually they're just comments, but um why 10 years is important and why this is such a big deal is Apple is basically saying we're gonna commit not only through the cycle of the World Cup, but even four years beyond the World Cup. Um, you know, Apple, of course, is looking to maximize their their profits towards the end in terms of subscriptions and things like that with that final four years. But the fact that they were willing to go a full 10, um, that speaks volumes that Apple is truly committing into this and they're not just going to let it flop. You know, I, I think there will be hiccups. You know, there will be hurdles and obstacles that they, they can't plan for, whatever it may be. Um, but on the flip side, you know, we've even seen NFL matches, you know, games, uh, you know, have technical trouble, um, you know, and, and a lot of that falls to the broadcaster. Uh, with that being said, though, great, great statements would be cool. You know, C says it would be cool if they made exceptions like Premier League playing on Boxing Day uh, and have MLS games every Memorial Day or July 4th. Yeah, for holidays would be pretty cool. Uh, Evil Evil says with the new Apple deal, any chance they can now put back MLS Cup playoff games on the weekends? Maybe have one for Thanksgiving. Uh, getting See, rid of some of those midweek playoff games would you know it's it's just not they're you know midweek playoff <sighs> games are tough and I I agree. I yeah, think, I think it opens yeah, and, and 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 look, and look, I understand that, but I mean, but you have to you have to see it from the standpoint of uh, from MLS that they need to stop that they need to stop thinking as far as the 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 stepchild of sports in, in America. You know, they really want to move to the forefront. They got to be able to gain the the viewership and be able to fill the stands and stadiums midweek because I mean, you know, you hey. 
Rockets have been in the playoffs, and uh, you, people are filling up Toyota Center Wednesday nights. You know, when the Astros are making the World Series runs Thursday night, at Minute Maid Park is full. You know, there's no excuses for there. You know, so there's, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. So, you know, <laughs> uh, what is a playoff game? I forgot. Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. Mm. But, but, uh, but, you know, but just, I mean, it's just one of those things. Look, I was there at the, at the, at the last playoff game that they had against Seattle in 2017 when, when they were in the Western Conference final. And the atmosphere there was crazy, even though we got spanked. But it was great, and I don't, and I don't, I, and if I remember correctly, I, I, I'm, that might have been a weekend game. I'm not too sure, but I think I don't, I don't, I can't remember. I have to look that up. But, but, but it was a great atmosphere, you know. But you know, but obviously MLS playoffs are during November, and what's going on during November? NFL, you know, you got uh, b- uh, basketball going on, depending, and you know, obviously there's a, there's other things going on. So you're, there's always going to be something going on regardless if we if we put them on the weekends or the weekdays or whatever there's always gonna be something going on going on in america yeah i, th- I think the seattle match was actually a weekday match and i think it just yeah, goes so, to show and, and, it goes and it was to, packed yeah it was I, packed. that's what i was about to say i think it goes to show that it's not that mls can't pack stadiums in weekdays i mean we've seen it in seattle we've seen it in portland seen it in new york we've seen it in miami and not miami uh bu- 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 orlando um you know we, we've seen it in, in all cities i mean, I mean kansas city <laughs> I mean, so start, sorry to cut you off, Sean, but I mean, almost seventy thousand to watch Seattle lift up the Champions League over uh, over uh, who was it Cruz Azul or Pumas? Uh, it, was, uh, it was Pachuca, wasn't it? No, it wasn't Pachuca. No, Pumas, Pumas, Pumas. Yeah. Uh, so say, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, on a Wednesday night in Seattle, I mean, so I mean, you know, it it, it can't be done. It's just you know, obviously. We don't see it because we haven't had any taste of playoffs for the last however many years. So, I mean, we forgot how it is to do that. But like I said, winning cures all. And I don't think having weekday playoff games is going to change anything. But, you know. What I would like to see is if there is a weekday playoff game, then the second, you know, the, the next round would at least be spaced out to give teams a little bit of a rest, whether that's, you know, three days or even four days. That's, for sure, for sure, that's for sure. fine. Instead of this, like, play the very next day. I've seen a couple of times where – a team plays on a Monday, you know, in a play in match. And then on a Wednesday, they're playing oh. in the next, you know, the next round. It's like, that's, oh. that's not fair, you know, period. Yeah, or, or it's or it's like Liga MX playoffs, you know, if they're playing on Wednesday, then they play the, 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 the second leg on Saturday or Thursday for a Sunday, you know, something like that, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. But anything else you want to add to the television deal? Uh, Sean, because a couple other things we want to get to, we're only like 20 minutes away from nine o'clock and we still got a little bit more to talk about. Yeah. Just a real quick little, little thing too. Uh, you know, if you are going to be, uh, you know, if you are, if you're a season ticket holder and you get the subscription to the new streaming channel or streaming service, whatever you want to call it, uh, just know if you're on an Android device, like I am, uh, you won't get the luxury of being able to stream it through an app because they're not going to have a dedicated app because Apple hates Android and everybody that's not Apple. Uh, but that's okay because you can still pull up their uh, the site that they have or the website they have set up and stream it there, um, and it'll be just the same quality or just as good quality. Um, so just be aware of that. Just me tossing that out there as a techie guy. I uh, want you to be aware. Yeah. So I mean, anyways, who's watching the game on a phone? Watching on your app? Watching on your smart TV? If you're anyways, home. Uh, what if you're not yeah, home? If you're home? You know. Come on, bro. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess you know that's, I mean, that's, that's look, look, look. All I'm saying is, years. what if you are a podcast vlogcast host and it is a Wednesday (laughs) night and it's not a home match. It's an away match. And you are dedicated enough to your show to stream live, but you can't, obviously you can't stream and watch your TV. So, you know, I'm just saying like some of us, man, we gotta, we gotta do what we gotta do, bro. Get on TikTok. Somebody's somebody's posting on live. (laughs) His name is Rob (laughs) zip on TikTok. I'm just saying, you know, that man is out there streaming that, you know, so so obviously, you know, we talked about the dedication that Apple TV has to MLS, you know, obviously going through the, the, the two World Cup cycles, especially with the one coming to the United States in 2026. Speaking of the World Cup 2026, tomorrow is a huge day for Houston and for, and for the United States, obviously. Um, tomorrow, we'll finally get the announcement of whether or not Houston is one of the selected cities to host the World Cup game. Uh, for 2026, uh, the announcements should be coming in tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. 4 uh, p.m. 4 p.m. Okay. Um, so you know, a very exciting news, very big day for Houston. A lot of um, obviously, a lot of events have been going on through the city the last couple of years. A lot of uh, 
infrastructure uh, upgrades as far as, you know, trying to make sure that Houston is prepared for that type of event are being done, you know, and things like that. And obviously, you know, Houston is no stranger to hosting huge events. You know, we've, we've hosted a, a numerous amount of Super Bowls, obviously all-star games uh, and things of that nature. So, you know, Houston knows how to throw down when a big event comes to the city. So I'm really, I, honestly, Sean, look, I've gone through the list. I've seen the potential candidates. I, I, obviously, we know that New York's going to get get to get in. We know Los Angeles is going to get in. You know, the cities like that are obviously right. But I, but I, I can't see a reason why Houston is not on that list tomorrow. Um, as if, 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 we're, if we're really looking at the infrastructure, the way to transport to the to the, to the center of the city, what we have available as far as facilities, uh, the numerous amount of facilities, the hotels transportation, uh, the food, the culture, the diversity. I mean, damn, man, Houston is, Houston is it, you know? Um, so I would be, I would be highly, very, very highly disappointed if Houston is not one of the selected cities to, to be there in the U S uh, for the U S world cup. Uh, but with that being said, Sean, you know, what, what percentage wise, how are you, how are you feeling? How confident are you feeling that Houston's going to get, uh, a, a, a shot at this. I mean, don't give me no 50, 50. I want, it's either a yes or a no, but I want to, I want a number. It's either a yes or a no, but you want a number. Is that what you just said? I want a percentage. Like, how, oh, how do you feel? Like, you're, like you're 40%. Yes. That means you're more towards a no, you know? Uh, I'm going to say 80%. Yes. 20%. No, I think there's maybe one or two markets. That I like can, it. There are one or two markets that could potentially, you know, potentially steal it out from under us. But I think that, uh, all signs at this point point to Houston being such a big powerhouse in terms of what we, you know, what was presented and the bid was a strong bid, um, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, evil mentioned the third place game or, or quarterfinal. I think a third place game would make sense if they host, I don't know, the final in Dallas. Um, that's a pretty, you know, pretty close drive, not, not a real far drive. Uh, and you can host, you know, four teams that way uh, within two different cities. Uh, and it should, you know, shouldn't be too big of an issue. And if I'm not I mistaken mean by then, the uh, the quote unquote you know fast rail or whatever that's going to run between Houston and Dallas should be done. Yeah, I mean, look. Not only do I think Houston should be one of the select I think Houston should be hosting some very important games, whether that be a semifinal match or or quarterfinal or quarterfinal match. You know, uh, I, I obviously I don't think we're going to get the final. I think that but that, that, that's probably going to go to Los Angeles that side, that SoFi Stadium or maybe. Maybe Dallas gets an outside shot, but I think it probably goes to Los Angeles with that fancy new stadium that Stan Kroenke got out there. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, man, I mean, you know, man, you know, not only do I think, do I believe Houston will be able to select the city, I think we should be able to get uh, uh, a knockout match or two, you know, semifinal, quarterfinal, whatever, something huge. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I already have my alarm clock set to the time so I can tune on, tune in. I think it's going to come on on Fox Sports, uh, FS1 or whatever. When that's where they're going to, they're going to announce it. Uh, and I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Like I said, um, there's, there's a, there's a proposed event going on Friday if, if Houston gets selected. Um, I forgot who tweeted it out. I saw it on, I saw it on my Twitter page, on my, my Twitter feed. Uh, so, I mean, you know, Sean, if you do see it, maybe retweet it from our account, you know, so that way people can have that information and maybe we can be out there partying, you know, like it's 2026. Um, <laughs> so let me ask we'll you see a question. What happens, I'm excited. I, I don't think we've asked this question yet. Uh, if, if Houston is announced, are you going top dude, man, dude, the world, I mean, look, as a soccer, as a soccer no, fan, no, 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 sorry. Let me, let me rephrase this as a vendor distributor. Oh, you talk about business opportunity, my dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, 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 look. Uh, look who knows? Uh, who knows where I'll be? Who, who knows where I'll be in twenty twenty six? That's fair. That's fair. I'm just saying, if no. you're still, if you're still slinging if, beers, if, if, if I'm, if I'm still involved, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's going to be one of the priorities. But yeah, uh, I would hope so. I would hope so. Say, it's it's going to be the DNA priority. <laughs> but I mean, but you know, but obviously, you know, look, man. I, I, I think anybody here can can agree with me as a as a soccer fan, not just a Dynamo fan, as a soccer fan in general. Uh, one of the goals should be to attend the World Cup game. Look, when the, when the Copa America since the scenario was here, man, I was so excited. I went to every match that was in NRG. You know, 
I was at the, was, I was at the was U.S. Great. Argentina match in the final. Yeah, I was there too. You know, what great incredible free kick, atmosphere. But, well, oh, great atmosphere! You, incredible. Let me ask this because I'm kind of curious now. Did you go to the International Champions Cup when uh, Barca played uh, Bayern Munich? Yes, I was there. Or no, Real Madrid played. Bar- Bayern. No, 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 Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. Yeah. That was uh, that was oh, that was in nineteen. What a fantastic match! That opportunity yes, to watch that caliber of soccer. Oh man, my See, heart. Just, oh. No, 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 no. And, and look, and and and, and the thing, the difference is here. Look, the Bayern, the Bayern Madrid match. You know, that's that's, that's a glorified friendly, right? Sure, sure, sure. But but but, but the but, but like but like when you have matches that matter, like that Copa America tournament that was here in America. Yeah. Those matches matter, and the level of soccer is so high that you just you're just so enamored with with how with what's going on. You don't you don't you don't want to keep your you want to keep your eyes on the pitch because you never know when you're gonna see something amazing. And to have that type of level of soccer back in Houston would be just amazing. And you know, like I said, as a soccer fan, one of your, your number if if not your number one goal should be to attend a World Cup in your lifetime. You know, and the fact that it's coming to your home country, that's great. You know. I, st- I still personally want to go to a World Cup in a different country. I'm not going to go to Qatar, you know, <laughs> not my, you know, whatever. But, you know, but, you know, maybe, hey, if Uruguay and Argentina get in 2030, hey, I might be in, this, I might be in Uruguay and Argentina during the summer in, two, in 2030. So who knows? But, uh, but with that being said, man, I'm excited. And, and I'm what, happy. Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the announcement, you know. I'm looking forward to seeing Houston as one of the cities selected and, and man, it's going to be great, man. It's going to be great. I'm just, it's going to, it's so much opportunity. It's going to be so much more opportunity for the city of Houston as far as financially and all the other stuff going on, because the difference about world cups in different countries, as opposed to the United States is the infrastructure is already here. Yeah. Yeah. There is no, yeah. there, there, there is no building stadiums. This and that. No, if we really have it, the only thing we're doing is upgrading transportation, maybe upgrading hotels, things like that nature, things like that. And we're, we're and the, and the city budget or, or grand scheme of things ain't that much as far as, you know, planning goes. But when you have to start from scratch and build stadiums for here and there, like Qatar is doing, you got to have boatloads of money to get that thing. And, and obviously those guys do, but but yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. So hopefully we'll see what happens tomorrow. And obviously we'll be talking about it next week. You know, once we get, once we do get announced, then obviously we'll, what we're going to be doing from here on out after that. So that's, that's some high confidence. You know, the last thing I'll add is, you know, the one thing you didn't bring up in talking about, you know, what it's like to go to these types of matches. And I've not been to a World Cup again. I was at the Copa Americana, uh, Americano uh, match uh, between Argentina, the final. And, and I mean, it was, again, just such an, that atmosphere was unreal. But mm-hmm. that's the thing, right? The, and the Argentina fans, and, and trust me, if you thought that was something, the Argentina fans there, if you thought that was something, elevate that a hundredfold. The atmosphere and culture that these interna- that these national team fans are going to bring for the semifinals, for the finals, even for the round of 16, it is going to be, un- I mean, it is going to be a, a once in a lifetime. No, I wouldn't say once I mean- in a lifetime. It is going to be a... Incre- like you can't replicate no, that you, in an MLS you, you, match. You, you can't replicate you, you can that in any it, other. You can call it a once in a lifetime experience. You can call it a once yeah, in a lifetime true. experience. Just because you have it more than once world. in your lifetime doesn't mean it's not once yeah. in a lifetime. That's true. Yeah, yeah this, 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 this could this, this could possibly be a once in a lifetime experience to a lot of people. Mean you know, and 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 it's and when something like that happens and, and it comes on, dude, you gotta you gotta grab the bull by the horns and just enjoy that moment because you never know if that moment is ever gonna come again. Just imagine, man. Imagine. An England USA match in Houston, July 2026. You know, so dude, do you know how amazing the atmosphere would be in NRG? You know, England USA, whatever, or or imagine an Argentina Mexico. You know, some something something. You know, Brazil Argentina in some kind of knockout match. Germany versus 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 versus, versus Brazil. Some something something huge, man. Just. Ah man, I'm just I'm salivating from the thought of it. So, but anyways, let's 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 talk, let's talk about the uh, oh Dynamo Insider with the with the news here. Pumas are monitoring Fafa PQ uh, Fafa. So Pumas might be the one of the teams that go ahead to pick up Fafa. We'll see what happens with that. Thank you, Dynamo Insider, for the for the news. Uh, but yes, speaking please. about World Cup, you know, speaking about World Cup, we had a. Uh, 
Nations League match yesterday, man. We're going to keep a little bit global soccer here. You know, and obviously big match for the United States yesterday and the Custacan and El Salvador, a one-on-one draw against El Salvador uh, yesterday and what was seemed to be called the, the, the mud ball. But look, man, a lot of people complaining about the, the conditions and stuff like that. But if you're going to have these Central American teams come up to play in Buffalo, New York, or Columbus in the in like nine inches, nine inches of snow, the USA can come down to Central America and play in six inches of mud. It's all good. It's all the same deal. It's all the same thing. But uh, <laughs> but it was a fun match. I'm not gonna lie. A very interesting match. Very fun match. Um, two red cards. The both teams ended up in, and with ten men, and the U.S. ended up scoring on a Jordan Jordan Morris header on the uh, couple of what the what the match ending in the last couple of minutes. I think it was the 80th minute, 88th minute that he scored. If I'm if I'm not mistaken. But Sean, your thoughts on the match for El Salvador? Uh, obviously, we had a match similar to that the day before with Mexico and. Was it Jamaica? Honduras? No, Honduras, Canada. Yeah. And, Mexico and the Canadian played Jamaica Federation. last night. And the Canadian Federation actually went and and um, made a big deal about the, the conditions of the pitch. But, yeah, you know. No, I, I think, uh, you know, Alexi last night said it really well. He said, you know, it, it doesn't matter. The pitch conditions are what they are. This is CONCACAF. You've just got to you've got to ride it. You've got to push through it. And you've got to prove that you're as good as you think you are, as good as you want to proclaim you are. Um, and, and all credit to El Salvador, I think, for uh, the majority of that match, they looked like the better team. Look, they adapted to the conditions better. They stepped up to the level of what the U.S. men's national team brought to them. Uh, and if it wasn't for Jordan Morris coming in and hitting that header, I mean, you know, uh, and, Dude, and, uh, I mean, you know, what can you look, say? El Salvador was about to about to experience a glory they haven't experienced in 11 plus years. No, 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 no. It was it's okay. So the last official match not a friend of the list of last official match that El Salvador has been the United States and was in 1992. So you know this and this is Nations League so this is not a friendly these are these are these are matches matches that count towards something and because and you know shout out to Salvador right now because they, they've already qualified for next year's uh ne- next year's gold cup Why are because you saying of the Nations League doesn't count for anything it, it is uh it's how you qualify for gold cup now yeah, 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 no, no. I'm, I'm saying no. I'm saying that Nations League does count for some. Does count for something. It's oh, not a gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I yeah, follow. Yeah. I follow. Uh, uh, so you know, and like I said, shout out to Salvador. They qualified for the next year's Gold Cup because of their standings. They can't finish anywhere less than second place in their group, so they're already qualified for Gold Cup. So shout out to those guys. Um, but with that being said, yeah, man, 1992. I was in kindergarten, man. I was in kindergarten in 1992. Uh, so that just shows how long ago that was. Um, you know, and out man, dude, to be to be that close, it, it, it's frustrating sometimes. But like I said, the bigger the bigger picture was, you know, that El Salvador qualified for next year's Gold Cup, and and they're they're pretty they're pretty well set, you know, as far as you know where they're standing is. Obviously, they still have one more match against the United States and America sometime in March of next year. So we'll see how that goes. But but uh, but you know, with that being said, you know, shout out to those guys for playing their hearts out. Uh, and you know, United States have they have to understand that man. You know, even though you're trying to go and be this global powerhouse in your region, you still have to battle these 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 smaller countries, Central American countries, and you have to go down there and prove that you are who you say you are. You know, the same thing goes with Mexico. You know, Mexico and the United States are supposed to be the two big giants of this region, but the last couple of matches, you know, they haven't shown it whether it be in Nations League or World Cup qualifiers, they haven't shown it, you know, and they still get teams like Honduras and Costa Rica and Salvador, you know, still giving them trouble, you know, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it is what it is, but I mean, you know, but neither here nor there. I want to say, I want to say one thing real quick. I okay. think the best scenario was actually the U S playing El Salvador last night to a draw. I would have even said actually to a loss. Uh, for a few reasons, but number one, you're playing in tough conditions against a very tough team. What are you going to be playing at in the World Cup? Tough conditions against very tough teams, right? So you, you've got to get yourself ready. And sure, it's different conditions. I don't care about that. Again, it's you've got to play whatever is handed to you. It's yeah. just the fact that this is, you know, it's a different level. You're stepping up to a different level. And I know that sounds crazy to, to some people, but yeah, the way El Salvador played last night, the way those players literally played for that country badge that was on their shirt, my God, I'd love to see Seren play that way when he's with the damn Dynamo. 
Oh man, Saran, was man. On I'm, 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 I'm telling you, man, Sar- Saran. I mean, he he's he's a prideful player because when he puts on that Salvador jersey, you know, he 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 he's out he's out there. He's he's he. I mean, I can't, I'm trying to think of a dude. He's 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 uh, he's he's Conte over there. He's he's Conte over there. A man, man with three lungs. He's playing every midfield position in for for Salvador. Uh, but uh, but yeah, man, you know. Like I said, you know, proud proud for the uh, Salvador. You know, obviously for those who don't know, I'm from, I'm a Salvadorian, so you know, obviously I'm going to be proud for, of those guys. You know, and and you know, just great job with with with, with the coaches that have Hugo Perez and what those guys are doing down there. Um, and one final thing, real quick, from the U.S. perspective, the greatest thing ever happened yesterday as well. Hungary lost four nothing to England. I mean, Hungary man, beat England man. four nothing. Look, we suddenly Jesus. went from the toughest group to one of the tougher groups in in the you know in the in the World Cup to one of the easier groups in the World Cup of England. So, like that. So, so before before we go, I just want to say this about about that. So you know, everybody was like, "Man, Hungary's in the group of death." You know, they got Germany, Italy, England. You know, all these big powerhouses, all World Cup winners. You know, Euro Euro yeah, winners France. and things yeah, like France. that. No, not France. No, it's it Germany, Italy, England, Hungary. It's not England. Like, England is in the group with the U.S. No, no, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, oh, the Nations oh, League. Oh, yeah, 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 in the Euro, yeah. Yeah, UEFA so, Nations League, yes. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, and everybody was like, oh, man, Hungary's going to get eaten alive. No, no, oh, dude, uh, no. Hungary's number one in the NFC right now. Look at them now. So They're looking but, you know, down at everybody going, when are you going to get to our level? Look, I mean, that's <laughs> that's the thing, though. You know, when, when, when your players, you know, when you're playing competition, the level of an England, the level of a Germany, of a France, you know, uh, you know, U.S., whatever you want to say, depending on your region, um, you know, Argentina, Brazil. Look, there's always chances. And and we've seen this closing of the gap throughout a lot of the regions where teams that would be on the, you know, on the bubble and, and really have a struggle to come close are now fighting. And they are they are fighting tooth and nail to the point that they're picking off teams left and right. And. I think it's very possible in this World Cup we see a dark horse winner this year. Uh, you know, not, guys, not a traditional powerhouse. Yes, yes. Guys, so before we go, just a re- quick reminder, you know, obviously, Sean and myself, we're working as hard as we can to make Generation Orange as best of a show that we can for you guys. And obviously, we, we would love it to, you know, to continue growing and, and all that stuff. You know, we need your help with, uh, as far as, you know, growing our subscriber base on YouTube and Twitch. Right now, we're currently at 111 for each. We're trying to get it to 150. So we're obviously doing a little giveaways to to help that push, uh, guys. You know, one fifty we get you a a, a Dynamo Diesel uh, cuddle buddy for night times when the Dynamo win. You can cuddle up and hug them, for, you know, and and tell them everything that you wish for and all that good stuff. We got hats, hat giveaways as well. New new era hats, brand new, not no no bullshit. Um, new new era hats, you know, fitted dad hats, whatever. You know, you pick your you pick your choice of whichever one you want. Once we hit 150 on 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 YouTube and or Twitch, because we want both to go. But you know, once either one hits first, we'll do a giveaway. We'll announce that on our Twitter page. So get your brothers, get your sisters, your moms, your aunts, your grannies, your sons, your daughters, whoever your mailmen, your your side pieces. If they if they got a YouTube, if they got a phone, they got a YouTube page. Just hit that subscribe button for them on Twitch and YouTube. You know, get it done. You know, all that good stuff. Um, man, you know, I see the we forgot to do the predictions for 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 the matches set this Saturday. So uh, we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna go two uh, one Dynamo uh, against Orlando City. Obviously, Dash beat the Orlando Pride. Why can't the Dynamo beat the Orlando City uh, Lions or whatever they call they call themselves? Uh, but guys, yes, please hit up, help hit us up our Twitter. Market. Hit up our Twitter at Gen Orange Ra- uh, Gen Orange Radio and do us a favor and tweet your predictions there. Uh, you know, we'll be taking them all week and we'll see who's, who's right and who's wrong. For sure. For sure. But guys, you know, like I said, it was a first show back for myself. I appreciate all the love and support and all the, you know, how you, how you doing and all that stuff, you know, like again, shout out to Colin and Rob for filling in for me. Those are the last couple of shows, Sean, I appreciate all the hard work that you do. But, uh, guys, like I said, like I've mentioned prior before, until HH hits, until Hector Herrera hits that pitch on PNC, two H's up. And we're going to always hold it down. So hold it down for H-Town.
Pero tú comes el pastel Con estilo siempre te vas Pero te vienes como un placer